These are the 14 inch M3 Pro and M4 Pro MacBook Pros. And while they look almost identical and had the exact same price at launch, there's a lot that separates them. While the new M4 Pro saw a relatively quiet launch, in my opinion, it has the potential to be one of the biggest upgrades over the last couple of generations. And having used the M3 Pro since it was released, I'm really looking forward to seeing if the M4 Pro can address a few of the issues I've had with the M3 Pro. Today, I'm kicking that off with my first look at the MacBook Pro M4 Pro, going over the differences and improvements over the last generation, running some tests and some things to look out for if you're considering buying one of these. So if you are thinking about picking up the new MacBook Pro or you just wanna get a general idea of what this machine can do, stick around and let's get into it. Hey everyone. Kyle Erickson here. I've been using the base MacBook Pro M3 Pro as my main machine for the last year, and I've used it for a wide range of tasks. In large part, that's been creating and editing these videos, but I've also done my fair share of design, programming, 3D work, amongst other things. And for the most part, it's done all of those things incredibly well, but that's not to say it couldn't be better. There are rare occasions where I'll run out of system memory and some things can still be slow or feel like the M3 Pro isn't quite enough. And while the M4 Pro might just seem like an incremental update, given there wasn't a huge Mac event this year, there's a lot of upgrades in here that I'm super excited about and I think could really help with some of the issues that I've had. Sticking them side by side, they do look exactly the same, They've got the same dimensions, they're the same space black color with relatively the same weight, and most of the differences here are going to be internal, but there is still one notable visual difference between the two, and that's on the display. At a glance, again, they don't really look all that different, but when you crank up the brightness, the M4 Pro goes up to 1000 nits in SDR brightness versus 600 on the M3 Pro. SDR brightness is generally the best indicator of overall screen brightness because that's what we're looking at the majority of the time, and at 1000 nits, this is going to be much more visible in really bright areas. Outside of that, the picture on both of these looks great between the colors and the 120Hz refresh rate. And directly above the display, the M4 Pro has a new webcam with a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens that supports what Apple calls desk view. That essentially gives you a view of both your face and a top down shot in front of your keyboard, which I suppose could be useful for showing notes or objects on calls. But apart from that, the image quality is relatively the same between these two. And I would say those things are minuscule changes that by and large wouldn't make a huge difference in everyday use. But internally, that's a whole other story. Specs wise, these are both the base Pro machine. So they're one level up from the regular M series options, but just below the top tier Pro chips. That means this M3 Pro has an 11 core CPU, 14 core GPU, 18 gigs of RAM, and a 512 gig SSD, while the M4 Pro has a 12 core CPU, 16 core GPU, 24 gigs of RAM, and a 512 gig SSD. That's a considerable difference, not just in terms of the added cores and memory, but the types of cores as well. The M3 Pro has five performance cores and six efficiency cores, where the M4 Pro has eight performance cores and four efficiency cores, which should mean that the M4 Pro is much more performant. Performance cores are clocked at much higher speeds, so with certain tasks, that can make a pretty huge difference. That was actually an issue with DAWs and audio apps on the M3 Pro, where performance was worse on it versus the models before it because it had less performance cores. So it's great to see that get bumped up on the M4 Pro. When it comes to benchmarks, you see about a 22 to 30% increase in single core performance on the M4 Pro over the M3 Pro and 35 to 40 in multi-core, which is kind of wild. And there's even more disparity on the GPU where the M4 Pro performs around 40% better depending on the test. That's a pretty huge increase in performance. And on top of that, you've got an extra six gigs of RAM in the base version now, and you get all of this for the same price as it was previously. So there's a lot of value added without having to spend any more, which is always a win. 
Just for reference, in my own use, the 18 gigs in the M3 Pro has been fine for pretty much everything, and the only time I'll get those out of memory warnings would be either if an app process went rogue and I have a memory leak somewhere, or if I've got a bunch of apps open at once like Final Cut Pro, Lightroom, Affinity Photo, and some others, which I'm kind of guilty of leaving open, but using any of those apps on their own has been completely fine. So 24 gigs of memory in the new M4 Pro is probably more than enough for most people. The memory also has a much higher bandwidth, going from 150 gigabytes a second to 273, which in regular usage probably won't feel much different, but can make a difference in GPU intensive tasks like 3D modeling, gaming, and large scale data processing for machine learning. Speaking of which, I've also benchmarked the Neural Engine, which I think I'm going to start doing more of with all these new AI features coming out. That is around 37% better on the M4 Pro over the M3 Pro, which I suppose is notable. But just keep in mind that these are all just synthetic benchmarks, and while they can be used as a reference point for performance, there's no substitute for real-world testing. With that said, I'm going to be diving into more of that over the next week or two with both the M4 Pro MacBook Pro and the new M4 Pro Mac Mini that I've bumped up the specs on quite a bit, so it should be interesting to see what the difference is between those two and make sure that you're subscribed for more in-depth reviews on both of them, because there's a lot that I want to get into that we just don't have time for this week, but probably the most exciting change on the M4 Pro machines for me that I have to mention is to do with connectivity. Both the M3 Pro and M4 Pro MacBooks have the exact same number of ports, but Apple bumped up the spec on the new machines, going from Thunderbolt 4 to Thunderbolt 5. Thunderbolt 5 is a pretty new spec, and there are very few computers that have actually implemented it. I only know of a Razer laptop out there with it right now, but the transfer speed of Thunderbolt 5 can go all the way up to 120 gigabits per second, which is three times faster than what Thunderbolt 4 is capable of. That means things like USB docks and external SSDs can potentially run much faster, likely even faster than the internal drives on a lot of these Macs. I use external SSDs a ton with all my machines, so I'm really looking forward to the day where I can effectively test that out. But unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of accessories with Thunderbolt 5 right now, so that's more of a wait and see. But I'd expect those to start trickling out over the next year or so. On that note, one thing that I do want to caution people on is if you plan on saving yourself some money and running all your apps or workflow from an external SSD, that can produce some weird results in macOS. I've had issues trying to run apps like Xcode off a portable drive before, the Adobe Suite has gave me grief, and with my current workflow that I've been using for the last year, I've been running a Final Cut Pro library directly from an external drive, and I'll often get plugin crashes that you won't normally get running off the internal one. It's not a huge deal, and if you're willing to deal with a couple of bugs and issues in a setup like that, it will still work. And offloading basic file storage to an external drive works completely fine. But if you're not into that, it might be worth bumping up the storage capacity a little on the internal drive if you've got a lot going on. Speaking of internal SSDs, those run at relatively the same speed between the M3 Pro and M4 Pro as well, and frankly, pretty much everything else is almost identical with connectivity, from the SD card reader to the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth spec. Now, the one other feature that does have a fair amount of disparity between the M3 Pro and M4 Pro MacBooks is the battery, where the M3 Pro has an advertised 18 hours battery life, and the M4 Pro supposedly goes up to 22, which is a considerable increase. Personally, I've only had the M4 Pro over the last day or so, so it's a little early to tell how much better this is. It usually takes a while for the machine to finish indexing everything on the system, which can drain the battery life a little faster, but I feel like I can already notice a difference with it running through the same tests on each laptop. The M4 Pro just seems to be drawing less power doing the same resource-heavy tasks, which does kind of surprise me given it's utilizing more performance cores than the M3 Pro, but I'll definitely have more to say on that over the next couple of weeks. For now, I just wanted to at least get some info out there for anyone who's maybe on the fence about picking one of these base models up, or who maybe wasn't sure about how much better the M4 Pro is over the M3 Pro. In my opinion, so far this looks like a pretty big leap forward, and it's much more than an iterative update. 
With that said, depending on what you're doing, you can still get a lot done on a much more basic Mac than either of these. I have the M3 MacBook Air here, which I used for about three months as my primary machine that ran everything in my workflow just fine. That has also decreased in price and is a bargain for the right person, and I think the base M4 looks pretty capable as well. But for folks who want a lot more power or are doing more with their machines, this M4 Pro does have a lot to offer. I'm going to keep putting these new machines through the paces, and if there's anything that you guys would like to see show up in reviews for both the M4 Pro MacBook Pro or the new Mac Mini, please drop a comment down below. But that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video or you found it useful. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. If you'd like to see more tech-related content or help me develop a macOS app that makes a dramatic drum roll noise before any file opens, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next upload.